picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me. But the explosion was to change my life. What forever. explosion? I didn't see an explosion. Hmm. I'm going to start that again. As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me, but the explosion was to change my life forever.
drink. Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, but I could sense her reserve. It was something which seemed to afflict all Europeans. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Is that straight or with ice? Just give me the bottle with a teeth on it. I guess a little drop won't hurt. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. I was glad I wasn't picking up the check. What about the old man? Is he dead? I think he might be. I've never seen a real life corpse before. Except for Grandmama. That was different. She was family. Has he gone stiff? I shouldn't think so. He's only been dead a few minutes. Do you remember what happened when the clown entered? I remember that horrible tune he played all right. It was like a funeral dirge. I'd never liked accordion music either. Did the clown speak to the old man? No. He just laughed at him. Then he, he grabbed the old man's briefcase and ran out of the door. Did you see what the old man had in his briefcase? No, he didn't open it. Did you know the old man? No, monsieur. I never saw him before. Did the old man try to stop the clown? Oh, he didn't have a chance. The clown dropped his accordion and ran out of the door. That's it. That's all I can remember. What did the old man do when the clown snatched his briefcase? Nothing. He just sat there like he was frozen. How did the old man behave? Well, agitated. He kept looking about him at the door, at his watch. As if he was waiting for someone? Yes, I suppose so. He was worried about something, that's for sure. If you ask me, he was having an affair. He had that look about him. Like a guilty husband. <laughs> okay. Stay here, mademoiselle. I'm going to look around for evidence. Okay, let's look around for evidence. Oh, something there. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit card. The guy's past was a blank page. Hold it right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons. 
and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Blue. I apologize, Monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Stop holding your breath at once. <laughs> Has it occurred to you that he may be dead? Move. Oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? <laughs> All we know is that he is dead. It seemed reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. Take Maigret, for instance. But, but he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tatin. That's different move. They were comedy Belgians. Anyway, it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. I doubt if she is in a fit state for questioning, monsieur. It smells to me as if she has been drinking. Oops. As I feared, we have stumbled upon a den of iniquity, move. Leave her to me, sir. I am used to handling drunken women. I do not doubt that for one moment. <laughs> hey, maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah, I guess so, apart from the bomb blast. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? No. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Move. She'll live. If she survives the hangover, she doesn't remember seeing a clown, monsieur. That's odd, don't you think, monsieur? Who am I to believe? I wonder. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I yeah, hope nothing, John Snow. Does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough.
Sergeant. You have the inspector. Go on, monsieur. I really didn't see the clown. He ran into the alley across the street. Did you follow him? That's your job, not mine. An armed chase through the streets of Paris? That's not our style, monsieur. Inspector Rosso may be unorthodox, but he's not crazy. Did you find the victim's briefcase yet? No, sir. The inspector gave me specific instructions to guard this door. Until he countermands these orders or backup arrives, here I stay. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. How did you and Rosso arrive at the scene of the explosion so quickly? You arrived within minutes. Was it a tip-off? Inspector Rosso's sources are a perpetual mystery to me, monsieur. There are some who say he has made a pact with the devil. And what do you think? I think he is the devil. What is Rosso doing with that girl? He is giving her the once-over, as you Americans say. Huh? Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. Was he serious about all that psycho detective stuff? Of course. Inspector Rosso is a pioneer and a visionary. His revolutionary methods, once perfected, may change the face of law enforcement forever. I can't see it taking off in L.A. See you later, Sergeant. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. Excuse me, Mademoiselle? Hi, my name's George Stobart. Oh. An American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right. On holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. What's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you can interview me about the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real-life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh, God. It's him again. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planter. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Uh, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. 
And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. A bien pour, monsieur. Fine, I'll uh, see you soon. Spare a few minutes? I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a bunch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like... In a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he said. I could watch it all day. Scared beat. I could have knocked his block off. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Planta. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already. I didn't see a thing. He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. He'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Listen, I have to find that clown. He's a killer. Say, who are you anyhow? A cop? No, of course not. I mean, do I look like a cop? I guess not. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. The clown killed the old man? That's right. Blew him up with a bomb concealed in his squeeze box. Merde. But why did he go to the bother of dressing up like a clown? Who can unravel the tangled logic of a killer's mind? I guess it's some deep-seated psychological need. Or just plain showmanship. I gotta go. Don't let me keep you. There was nothing inside the tent except a large toolbox. What do you think you're doing? I was admiring your toolbox. Oh, wait. Had a good look, have you? I'm warning you, if you touch it, I'll crack your nut. <laughs> okay, I get your point. Okay. Okay. The door was securely locked. Well, good that way. Cool. Um, right, okay. All good? Uh huh. Thanks, sir.
Okay, well, cheer. You remember playing this, so I'm relying on you to help me out. <laughs> okay, where's that? Oh, go to the police station. Is it the police? I'd like your personal details, please. Huh? What for? In the event of an accident. It would help us to know where to send the body. Look, is this really necessary? I came in here to talk to Rosso. Ah, uh, why did you not say? Is Sergeant Moo available? What? You want to speak to him? Yes, please. I cannot recall the last time someone asked to speak to me. No one ever speaks to me. Not even his keeper. <laughs> ah, bien. He's not here, monsieur. He is with Inspector Rosso. Like Laurel and Keaton. No, monsieur? Hardy. Oliver Norville Hardy. May I see Inspector Rosso? He is not here. But do you wish to leave a message for him? I have a choice of blue or black pen. I'd recommend the blue for a less formal communication. I'd prefer to talk to him in person. As you wish, monsieur. Have you had any reports concerning a suspicious clown? Why, yes. There was a fracas only this morning. Three arrests for public disorder. And you say there was a clown involved? A clown and a particularly offensive piece of sculpture with balloons. Are you in any way involved with the reprobate, monsieur? No, not me. Do you know anything about Rosso's psychic techniques? I cannot comment on my superior's method. All I will say is that Inspector Rosso has an impressive record. He's a good detective? One of the best. He's a man of honor with a fine sense of beauty. You wouldn't say he was not to his face, monsieur. <laughs> Thanks for your help, officer. Ring in the reporter. Bonjour, Kula. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? Well, I haven't had a lot of luck. You found nothing? Uh, no. Look, I'm very busy right now. Call me if you have any news, okay? Oh, yeah, I guess. Adieu, monsieur. Yeah, see you. Okay, there's got to be something around here. Find some evidence. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. 
The rest was rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed Din, 1345. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. There was nothing of interest. I examined the boxes closely. They were damp and smelly and decidedly empty. I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. Ooh. <laughs> I guess the clown had an escape over the rooftops. Oh, you broke it. Over here. It smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. Ugh. I tried to lift the cover with my fingers, but couldn't gain any leverage. Oh, right, okay, so that's why we're going to need a tool. From that lovely man's toolbox. I wonder if we're still making the Broken Sword series. Hey, you! What do you want now? What's in the toolbox? What's in the toolbox? As if you didn't know! What's the big deal about tools, anyhow? They're cool. Tools are civilization. You don't say! That's right. Tools are what distinguish us from other animals. Who are you calling an animal? <laughs> I've met your sword before. Looking down your nose at me because I'm working class, eh? I've a good mind to knock your block off. What kind of tools do you keep in your box? Eh? You really are interested in tools? Sure. Like I said, tools are... Yeah, civilization. So you keep saying. So are you going to show them to me? Am um, I? Why, you? Aw, oh, come on. Just a little peek. I've got work to do. Find someone else to bother. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drink, so I didn't have to stop to eat. <laughs> oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Ah, look at this. Damn bleeding out liberals. Ja, save the dolphins. Catch them and eat them, I say. 
All that fuss over a bunch of fish. Nah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Like <laughs> champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what this? Saleh indeed running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend. Bucephalus reborn, mon ami. Like a streak of lightning she is. <laughs> Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money <laughs> on that knife. What about your toolbox? Stop it. Help yourself. <laughs> I found just what I wanted. A tool for lifting manhole covers. Okay, what was the manhole cover now? The cover was too heavy and awkward to lift with my bare hands. But I have this. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. And you've just put your fingerprints all over it. Again. Again? Yes, I spoke to you earlier. But of course, it is Monsieur Hardy, Stobart, uh, George Stobart. I 
I found this red nose near the Café de la Chandelle Verte. A clown's nose? That's right. The guy who wore this is a savage killer. If you say so, monsieur. Don't you want to look at this nose? Not particularly, monsieur. Don't you want to look at this nose? Not particularly, monsieur. Take a look at this. Inspector Russell's personal car. Where did you get it? He gave it to me. Why? I think he was impressed with my powers of observation. He asked me to contact him if I had any information. I see. You are a grass. Have you any idea what this tool is used for? Oui, monsieur. It is a dip stick. Don't you want to look at this nose? Not particularly, monsieur. Thanks for your help, officer. Very helpful. It's me again, George Stobart. Hi, George. Any news? No. How about you? No, nothing new. My father knows. That's news. door was securely locked. So does anybody have any ideas? I'm a bit lost at this point. Excuse me, Sergeant. Please go away, monsieur. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantown. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. God, they're not very good, are they? I found this red nose in the sewer. What were you doing down there? Fishing for clues. That's where the clown went. You still insist you saw a clown, monsieur? Of course. And this novelty nose proves it. It will take more than a plastic proboscis to convince a specter or a soul. You don't want this as evidence, then? Certainly not, monsieur. Are you sure you don't want this false nose? Don't try my patience, monsieur. They're useless, aren't they? Look, Sergeant, the inspector gave me his card. Yes, monsieur. He wants you to advise him if you have any information concerning this case. Well, I'd be glad to talk with him, but I don't want him working this psycho weirdness on me. Ah, no, monsieur. You are confusing the science of parapsychology with witchcraft. Oh, yeah. What's the difference? We don't do sacrifices. <laughs> Um, nose. Are you sure you don't want this false nose? Don't. Tr See you later, Sergeant. Wow. I considered climbing the lamppost, but it wasn't going to shed any light on the affair. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. I don't 
know what to do. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. That seems to be what the police are doing. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Hi there. Hold it right there. You, you swore right. I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there. Immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now. What were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Huh, ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu! That is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon dieu! And then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my weight height was such an attraction. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find it. 
Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Ah, you need some sensible boots. You won't get by with those that stupid sneak out. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave? Or do I have to call the police? Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank you, Tom. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> ah, that's what you think. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. I have to be going. I'll let you out. Thanks for your time. Go on, be off with you. There was nothing inside the tent except Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. I believe this material came from the clown's clothing. If you are right, monsieur, then the clown must be an Englishman. Well, how do you figure that? Only the English would wear a suit made from material like that. Don't you like the English? It is not so much a question of liking, rather one of taste. They have none. <laughs> Screw you. Do you recognize this dirty tissue? No, monsieur, I do not. I found it in the sewer. Perhaps it would be better if you put it back there. No way. This could be an important clue. If you say so, monsieur. I've tracked down the clown's movement, Sergeant. Is that so, monsieur? Yeah. There's a man down the street who saw him crawling out of the sewer. Dressed as a clown? No, he changed into ordinary clothes by then. So, how did he know it was the clown? He didn't, but all the clues add up. Little children can add up, but I wouldn't let them manage my bank account. Are you sure you don't want this? Don't. See you later, Sergeant. Hi there. Bonjour. Ah, Monsieur Stobart. I found this scrap of material. Vraiment? It was probably torn from the clothes of a psychotic killer. Even if you were Sherlock Holmes, I would have trouble believing.
Thanks for your help, officer. Bonjour, Kula. It's me again, George Stobart. Hi, George. Any news? No. How about you? No, nothing new. No. Well, that's me done for tonight, if I figure out how to save it. So that I can continue it later. Um. Ah, there we go. But I might have one blast at Buster Groove. So I'll be back in five minutes because I need to go to the little girl's room. Thank you.